Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Bland County Survivor Man. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, on Bland County Survivor Man, I got a feller up in uh, up in uh, Canada that asked me to do a video about how to make some lye soap at home. And I had never made any lye soap before. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make lye soap. Now, I've got some right here. And I'm going to show you the process that I went through to get that lye soap. The first thing we have to do, guys, is we've got to create our lye. Now, you can hear that lye running off right there right now, and I'm going to cut it off so it won't be that noisy and uh, tell you how I made it. First of all, take your four gallons of hardwood ashes and put them in a five-gallon bucket, just like I've done right here, or whatever kind of plastic container. Uh, that you got on hand. Next thing you want to do is pour you about two gallon of hot water over them ashes. Now the way that I got this stuff to uh, come out the way I wanted it to, strong enough to make soap, is I've let this stuff sit in this water and steep just like a tea. And you can see this stuff looks like tea. But that right there is pure lye water. And we're going to make some soap out of it, or use it to make soap. But anyway, let that stuff steep in there for just about a week. I, I drained it off once and checked it to see how strong it was. And guys, in a minute I'm going to show you with an egg. I have an egg right there. I'm going to show you with that egg how to test your lye and make sure that it's strong enough. You can also do the tater, the potato float if you want to, but... In this video, I'm going to use an egg. And of course, some people recommend that you stick a feather in your lye and see if it melts. So if it does, then you know it's strong enough. But we're going to use an egg in this video. So let's think about it for a second in a survival situation. In a survival situation, you're not going to have large containers to make your soap with. You're probably just going to have real small containers. By the way, you cannot put lye in aluminum containers. I found that right off of the bat. The stuff will eat the stuff up and it will turn it black. So what you would do in a survival situation is have some type of tin can or stainless steel, hopefully, that's what I'm using in this video, is stainless steel. You would take you like a sock and fill that sock full of ashes and tie it off because you're going to make this stuff in small quantities, strong enough to make your soap when you can add it to any kind of fat that you want to. The fat that we're going to use today is going to be pig lard. And I just went to the local grocery store and bought a pound of it to make this video. But you could, the hardest soap that you're going to be able to make was going to be coming from the, the tallow part of deer and uh, elk and animals like that. And that stuff is called tallow soap because it's harder anyway when you take it out of the animal. The pig lard makes a little bit softer soap and so does chicken fat or any other fat that you use will make a softer soap. But anyway, in this video I'm going to show you how I did it. But one thing else I want to tell you. In the, take that sock and put you some ashes inside that sock and sort of fill up and then tie it off. Then put it in your container and start the water to boil. Then set it aside and let it steep. Work it up and down in the container just like you're making a tea. And that's what you're doing. You're making a, a tea of lye water to use inside, you know, to put inside your grease pan to make your soap with. So you would just keep on steeping it until it gets strong enough. And from experience, you will tell after a while by be, by looking at it and the smell of it. I think of how it will be strong when it will be strong enough. Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to do the egg test and see if the egg floats. And we'll tell whether our lie is strong enough or not. By the way, see the safety gloves? Always have some safety gloves on hand when you do this because this stuff causes severe burns. If you're making lye, have some vinegar there to wash your hands and stuff with or, or wherever you splash that stuff on you, you can put that vinegar on there and that will neutralize the action of the lie. Also, have a pair of safety glasses with side shields on. Highly recommend that. You only have two eyes. Guarantee you when you put them out, you're not going to see anything else. And that won't be funny. So let's take an egg. 
let's put that egg down in that lye solution and see what we come up with. And as you can see, that solution is according to the books that I've read on it and according to the stuff that I've read on the internet and that's the way I did it the other day there's just about the size of a quarter sticking out through the top of the water right there you see that little white spot and it's just about the size of a quarter so guys that stuff is strong enough to make lye or to make soap it is lye to make soap but anyway, let's say the egg was floating up out of the water about halfway. That would mean that your solution is too strong. And what you want to do there is just add some distilled water to that solution until that egg floats exactly about where you see it floating right there in that water. The size of a quarter will be sticking up out of the water. So that's all you do to test your lye before you make your soap. Okay, you all, this recipe is for one pound of soap. I have, have, I have right here one pound of lard. I have right there 3.4 3 ounces of lye. And over here, I have 6.67 ounces of water. You can see my little prescription right there that I got made up. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to add the fat right here to the bucket. We're going to take it over here and we're going to sit it on the fire and we're going to let that stuff just melt down. We don't want it to get hot. We want it to get, get about maybe 120 degrees. And then we'll bring the other stuff, the other two things, the lye and the water, up to temperature and we'll add them to it. Okay, you guys, I want to show you this. You can see that dried lye crystal inside that aluminum pan right there where I boo-booed on making a batch? That's exactly what you can do if you want to have used just crystals. You can take that lye in that container right there, set it out in the sun and let it evaporate, and what will fall to the bottom of that jar will be pure dry lye crystals. And that's how you can do it and make it dry crystals and store it that way. So that's just one thing I wanted to show you. Now, fellas, one thing I want to tell you about this stuff right here, I, di I didn't tell you as far as the safety thing goes. If you don't have a nice airy building like I've got right here to make this lye soap, if you're making large quantities or small quantities of lye soap, take it outside on your barbecue grill or somewhere in the backyard and build you a little fire to make your soap. That way you won't be exposed to the fumes that will be definitely harmful to your lungs. Now, that stuff's almost coming up to temperature, and you can see the kind of thermometer. Poke it in a big old turkey. But anyway, bring the temperature of your, your uh, oil here up to around 120 degrees, and bring this lye temperature up, this lye water up to about 120 degrees. In a minute, we'll stick it in there and uh, check it, and then we'll put it inside the solution. Okay, guys, my grease is at the right temperature, and my lye water is at the right temperature. So I'm going to slowly add that lye water to that grease. And you will immediately see that stuff start to curdle. Because that's the reaction you're going to have when you do this. You'll see it start to curdle. Now the next thing we got to do with a wooden spoon is we got to stir. And folks, stirring, depending on how much this stuff you're making, takes, can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. So now, in a few minutes, I'll show you what it looks like after I get it stirred and uh, show you what it looks like. Guys, that's what it looks like about five minutes after I started stirring it. It's going to have a little bit of suds to it. But we, we're having a reaction there right now between the lye and the lard. Without the lye, you cannot create soap. You're just going to have grease. By the way, I messed up the batch three times before I got that soap I showed you in the first of this video. So if you mess up, 
check your lye solution and start all over again. That's all you have to do. In a minute or two or a half an hour or so, I'll show you what they mean when you read the word or hear the word trace when making soap. Okay, guys, when you read about this stuff or you see a video, you hear the word trace. And right there is what it means. You see how that when I stir that stick around in that liquid soap, that it leaves a mark in the soap that, dis that don't disappear. In just a few seconds, it'll disappear. That's what's called tracing. When you see that start to happen, that soap looks a little bit like tapioca pudding. And that's exactly what it looks like. What I'm going to do, now I've been about 30 minutes into this job right here. And always I read, I don't know if this is true or not, but here's what I read. I read that you go ahead and stir it for about another 15 or 20 minutes until uh, the stuff starts to thicken up. And some in big batches, they say that your spoon will just stand up in, in the solution. When it stands up in the solution, then it's time to pour it. But I don't think this is going to... This little old dinky stick's going to stand up in this solution right here as little as it is. But anyway, right there's what it looks like at about 30 minutes out. And it's almost ready to pour now. You can see how it kind of daubs off of the end of that stick or you see what it looks like. So in a minute, I'll pour it into the mold. Okay, guys. I've got this stuff stirred the way I want it. And I'm going to pour it into the mold and get me a pound of soap out of it, hopefully. Now what I've done here was made a stainless steel uh, mold and I greased it with some of the lard there. You can put uh, wax paper or whatever you want on it, but I did grease it with some of the lard. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Now I got a spatula there somewhere that I, I seem to have lost. And, uh, but anyway, Right there it is. I'll scrape the rest of it. Out into the mold. And of course I'll spread it out. But anyway guys, that's how you make lye soap. Chris, I appreciate you uh, asking me to do this. It was a challenge. It was almost as good a challenge as making a fire with a bow deer. Anyway, let me know how your soap turns out. Post it on my Facebook page, and I'll post you some pictures of this on the Facebook page, guys. Thanks for watching, and that's another tip from your Bland County Survivor Man. Have a nice day.